good? Yeah. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right. Shabbat Shalom, Facebook, and whoever else is watching. Okay. Today's message. I'm perfect. Are you? No. I'm perfect. No. <laughs> huh? Sure. I'm perfect. So, what does that really mean? Without fault. <laughs> huh? Without fault. Without fault? That's what we tend to think, right? <clears throat> We're going to get into what that really means, especially in the Hebrew. Actually, I'm going to just take that out since I'm on the sheet. Fight with that. Okay, so the word perfect in the Greek. Okay, before I get into this, though, anybody want to give. Give me their thought of what the word perfect is. You can't look it up, James. Not yet. So, Krista, what does the word perfect mean to your understanding? Okay. Nice. I like that. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that. I like that. She says she's perfect in her height. She's perfect in how she looks and the way that she is, and she's working on all the rest. I like it. That's good. Vanessa? Flawless. Flawless. I'm looking for something specific. Without blemish. Without blemish? Anybody? Anybody else? Can I get an L? Pure. Pure. Holy. Okay. So, what is the without fault? What is the thing that everybody says all the time? Yeah. Nobody's perfect. But according to Scripture, that's not true. According to Scripture, we can attain perfection. Because is perfection, now the typical thing is perfection, and the thing I was looking for, is that people try to look at it as being sinless. Yeshua was absolute perfection because he was sinless. The word perfect does not fit in that category. Yeshua was beyond perfection because he was sinless. But there are many places in Scripture, and we're going to get into that, where Yahweh tells us to walk perfect as he is perfect, to walk perfectly before him, and all these things. So that's a bit of an oxymoron since the church is teaching you you can't walk perfect. You can't be perfect. You can't be holy and righteous before the Father. So this is what the Greek and the Hebrew says. Here is what perfect really means. The Greek word is telos. It is often translated as the word perfect. But it means a goal an end or purpose? What is the end of our goal? What is the purpose of our goal? Righteousness. Beyond that. To be the Lord. To be like Him, to be united with the Father. And righteousness is correct, but there's one key thing I'm looking for. No? I'm, that's all correct. What? What's the end of our goal? Yes. To have a heart like His, absolutely. To be with Him. This is perfection. Okay? The Hebrew word, tamim. Huh? T-A-M-I-M -M in the Hebrew transliteration. Uh, in in the uh, in Hebrew, it's it's uh, tav mem yod mem mem <laughs> tav mem yod mem tamim. Now listen, this is what the Hebrew means: to be blameless, 
to be complete, to be intact, integrity, uprightly, and of course, unblemished, without defect. So the first one we're going to look at here is Genesis chapter 9. Go to the scriptures. Genesis 9, 6, 9. Genesis 6, 9. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with Yahweh. He was perfect in his generations. He was complete. He was intact. His DNA was not corrupted. We know when we talk about the Nephilim, stuff like that, the corruption of seed, the seed of man. Okay? Noah was complete. He was perfect in this manner. Okay? This is just one. To mean, <clears throat> to mean means in all manner purpose, to be complete. To meme means wholehearted, entirely committed. Are you listening? So when I say that, let's look at Matthew 5.48. Matthew 5.48. Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Again, let me stress what this is talking about. It's to be complete. Can you be complete if you are living in sin? You need something? No. Okay. Is that what Getting ahead of me, but yes. Can you be complete in Yah if you live in sin? If you make excuses, now I understand that sometimes people struggle with things, whatever, and they've got to work it out. Some people get delivered or get out of stuff faster than others. Some people, it takes a little while. Scripture talks about the weaker compared to the stronger and stuff like that, okay? That's fine. But everything boils down to a heart matter. Yah is always watching the heart. Do you justify? Do you, because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to use Sabbath. I love to use Sabbath as the prime example because Sabbath, man, that is, it, I, I tell you, besides marriage, it is his number one covenant. He loves the Sabbath. It is because we await to be in the eternal Sabbath rest with our Father. Sabbath is everything to, you, everything to Yehovah. So with that said, when we, keep, when we keep Sabbath, do you keep it? with the absolute joy that is a treasure to honor the Father in every way? Or do you do what you think is the bare minimum that you need to do to honor Yah with? That is the difference between walking in obedience and accordance to your way and being perfect before the Father. That's what to me is. Okay? A double mind I like this, this quote I came across. A double-minded man before Yah is one who desires to grow in Yah, but still you still insist on your own desires. Does that make sense? You still want what you want. You there's that part of you that wants what Yah wants, but you still want what you want. So you try to find this balance between what you want and what Yah wants, it won't ever work. Mm -hmm. You will never have that balance. You cannot have balance. 
between the flesh and the spirit. Not going to happen. Not ever. That's why scripture says that we are to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We are a double-minded man when we think that we can honor Yah and honor ourselves at the same time. Because we are not holy hearted and surrendered to the ways of the Father. I don't care what excuses you come up with. And especially when it comes to walking in obedience to Him. Yeshua did not die on the cross so that we could balance our wants and His wants to our liking. He died so that we would be fully, completely surrendered to Him, broken before Him, and say, let it be your way and not my own. As Yeshua said, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. Yeshua did not try to balance what he wanted and what the Father wanted. He just said, it's all what you want, and I will do it. It is making that decision. It is settling it in your heart and in your mind to say, I'm done. You got it. It's not to be it's not to be utterly sinless, but to keep from being Torahlessness. Right? We know because we're in this dying flesh, we cannot walk every day without committing sin. We have a moment of oops. There's going to be oops in our lives. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed, somebody decided to cut you off, and you didn't check yourself, and you let something slip. Now, if that's happening on a regular basis, you don't have an excuse for that. But sometimes stuff happens, we make a mistake. There's a difference between making a mistake and being toilessness. There's a difference between making a mistake and sinning. We will make mistakes, but don't justify it so that those mistakes are an often thing, because then you are not perfect before the Father. But we can be perfect before the Father. You can. And we need to get that mentality out of us that's been embedded in us over hundreds of years that we just can't do it right. Because we can do it right, because Jehovah said we can do it right, and He told us to do it right. So if He told you to do it right, that means you can do it right. And like the thing I like to hit every Christian with, they are on that verse. Um, I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. But the minute you talk about keeping the Sabbath, oh, nobody can do that. Well, can you do all things through Messiah who strengthens you or not? Either you can or you can't. And you think that in everything that you think that you can do all things through, that Yah is not going to make it possible for you to be obedient and be able to keep His commandments? Hello? That's going to be first before He's going to make it to where you can do all things through that valley of darkness that you've got to go through. He's going to give you the ability to do all things through Messiah who strengthened you in His mitzvot, in His moedim. His commandments and His feasts because those are important to Him. And no time did they become unimportant. And no time did they become irrelevant. And we have this mindset that has been taught to us from generation after generation. You can't do it. But man, tell somebody they can't move to another country in mission work or, or something like that. I can do all things through the Messiah. Strength is me. Will they keep the Sabbath? Oh, I can't do that. Mm. Why? Oh, I've got a picnic coming up. Right? I mean, really. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 13. 
What's going on? Okay, you know. Where's Michaela? Brandon. Go, go see what's going on. Hurry up. Deuteronomy 18. Verse 13. Yah says, You shall be blameless before Yehovah your Elohim. Is there anything that says except? Does it say except when work tries to call you in? Except when your cousin's got a wedding? Except when you got a family gathering or a funeral? Look, I, I know most people will disagree with me on this. I will come to Sabbath before I go to the funeral. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Yeshua said, let the dead bury the dead. What, what, what did he, that's exactly what he said when the guy said, I gotta go bury, bury my uncle or whatever. He said, let the dead bury the dead. They're not going nowhere. That body's not. So wait till the next day. He is referring to what it is to set him first. Set him first. You want to be perfect? Then make him first in everything. Yeshua says that you must be willing to hate mother and father and brother and sister and your children. Now we know he doesn't mean to literally hate. But it, 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 is a, it is to me that he comes before everything and everyone. This is how we can be perfect. This is how we walk perfectly before Yehovah. Let's go to uh, Second Samuel. Second Samuel twenty two, verse thirty three. Yah is my strength and power. He makes my way perfect. Tamim. He makes my way complete. He makes my way whole. And as Karen brought up, what does shalom mean? We know shalom means peace. But what is the real definition of shalom? To be complete. To be made whole. <laughs> Yehovah makes us complete. He makes us perfect. So how does Yah make us perfect though? There's one thing that we got to do. Obey. Obey. Submit. Submit. Repent. Repent. Surrender. All the above. Get rid of yourself and get more of Him. Like John said, make, um, less of me and more of you. Yes. If it's less of me, then there's no way for me to balance me in Him. It just needs to be Him. That's how I become perfect in all of His ways. That's how I can keep His commandments perfectly. That's how I can be retrained in my thinking so instead of reacting to somebody trying to go, you stupid moron, I will react going, Father, help them. Where it's an automatic response that I don't think badly, but that I think maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe I need to pray for them. Or maybe they just need to learn how to drive better. I don't know. Whatever the case may be. But that regardless of whatever goes on around, that my reaction is the way that Yeshua would react. That's how I am perfect in His ways. Because my thoughts are retrained every day, my prayer every day, because the Bible talks about 
If a man bridles his tongue, he is perfect in all his ways. Man, I have never ever understood that more like I have lately. And every morning when I pray, I'm on my way to work as my time alone to pray with y'all. I'd say on two things. Today, my thoughts, I don't ask because I know it's y'all's will. I said, today, my thoughts will be bridled. Today, my tongue will be tamed and it will be bridled in you today. As I don't think about tomorrow. I don't worry about me doing this for a long term. I think about only today. Today, I will be bridled in Yah. Today, I will walk perfectly before the Father in obedience to His ways. Amen? Amen. Do you get that? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Job 1.1. 1, 1. Wait a minute. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, or Job, because there's no J. Uh, anyways. And that man was Tamim, and Tamim, he was blameless and upright, and one who feared Yehovah and shunned evil. Do you shun evil? What do you watch? This is elementary, what I'm talking about right now. What do you watch? What do you listen to? What kind of conversations do you get caught up in? Do you laugh it off so you don't offend somebody? I had a guy at work show me trash on his phone. And I was like, don't show me that stuff. It, I didn't, it wasn't like, uh, like it was okay. No, don't show me. I don't want no part of that stuff. I don't want any part of that conversation. I don't want any part of watching this garbage or anything. And, it's, and it, it boils down to this. If, can you see, okay, these horror movies, Oh, Game of Thrones. I don't know how many Christians and believers love that show. Does anybody know what IMDb is? It's a site to look up movies and TV shows to see what their rating is. If, sex, if there's any kind of sex and nudity, violence, cussing, stuff like that. IMDb. Okay? In it, I looked up Game of Thrones. The first season alone, the stuff it was describing, was like I was reading about porn, incest, lesbianism, homosexual acts, and it says it explicitly shows all these sex scenes throughout the show. Nudity in every episode. But yet, I hear people talking about it on Christian radio stations. I hear people on Facebook. I, I, I read people's comments on Facebook who claim to be Christians talking about, oh, I love the new episode of Game of Thrones and the new season's going to be a renewed and, and I'm <coughs> blown away. Huh? Christmas? I won't watch it. Christmas movies? Don't touch them. I'm not going to watch something that honors paganism. Any of it. I don't care if it's a comedy and they've got it in there. If it's, if it's about it, will Yeshua watch it? And that's what we really need to think about. Will Yeshua watch this stuff? Will he listen to what you like to listen to? Will he read the books or the magazines that you like to read and look at? Whatever it is in your life, 
Will he go hang out at the place that you like to go hang out at? Will, can you see Yeshua go there and have fun there? And if you question it, then you need to stay away from it. Water parks, the beach, I won't go near them because all the chicks are half naked. Everybody's running around in bikinis. Why in the world would I go there and subject myself to all of that? It is all the wall flesh. I would have to go around like this. Somebody push me in the pool. I don't go to swimming pools. I don't go to any of it. Because it gives Satan opportunity to get you to stare and look. And though I know I won't, I'm not going to put myself in temptation's way either. Paul said to run from temptation, to flee. He didn't say go, oh, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? He said run. Get your butt in gear and exit stage left and get out of there. These things, again, how far are you willing to go? to walk perfectly before Yehovah. And I'm going to tell you something, all these things that we make decisions in and what we decide to do and don't do is going to have an effect on how prepared we are or are not for what's coming. You, your prayer request is, Father, make us ready. He says, right here, do this and you'll be ready. Because walking in obedience is going to give us the boldness that we need. Not because the, this gives us anything. Because we obey this, which makes Him give us everything that we need. To do what we need when it comes down and the crap hits the fan and everybody else is running with their tails tucked between their legs. You hear me? All right, let's go to uh, <coughs> let's go to Psalm 101. We're just about done. I've got one last thing to read after a couple more verses. Psalm 101, verses two and six. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. That's another thing you need to think about. What you do behind closed doors. I guarantee you that holds more merit than what you do in the open in front of everybody. It's easy to put on an act. It's easy to come here on Shabbat. And I'm not saying anybody does that here. But I'm using an example. It's easy to come here and put on a mask. And... Pretend to be holy and pretend to be obedient. But I tell you what, you want to see the real true fruit of this? Then when you're holy and perfect behind closed doors, man, Yah will bless you openly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 6, My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. So, let me ask you something. It says that my eyes will dwell on the faithful of the Lamb. Is the faithful of the Lamb those who proclaim Messiah, but yet tell you at the same breath, you don't have to obey His Word? You don't have to obey His commandments? You don't have to keep His feast? Because I have told you it's all done away with. Well, who told you? My pastor? Well, who told him? His pastor. Well, man, we got a problem here. Who told them? The church? Is that the faithful that, that y'all looks upon? Let's really fine tune this down to the nitty gritty of what Yah is talking about. Does he show mercy? Yes. And to those who may truly not have known better, will they have his mercy? Absolutely. But to those who Today, there's no more excuses for anybody in the body, not even in the church, because the Messianic, and those of us who don't call ourselves Messianic, but are of 
Yah and are keeping the feast and are keeping the commandments and everything else, we're making too much noise for everybody to not know. And we're going to keep making noise. And we're going to get louder. As Satan gets louder, we're going to get louder. And we're going to proclaim it from the rooftops and from the mountaintops. And we're going to proclaim His Torah. Because the day will come in Isaiah chapter 2 and Malachi, or Micah 4 that it says that out of Jerusalem the Torah shall go forth and be taught. And that's in the millennial reign. So yes, we will proclaim His Torah in the name of Yeshua. And nobody has an excuse. 2 Corinthians... I'm sorry. Um, yes. 2 Corinthians. Thirteen eleven. Finally, brethren, farewell. Become complete, perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in wholeness, in completeness. And the Yah of love and peace will be with you. It's that simple. Do this, and He will be with you. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For you are in need of the milk when you should be a teacher. And my favorite part of that is this. I was going to quote it, but I want to make sure I, I get it verbatim. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of Yah. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So in other words, he is not perfect. He is unskilled. He has not reached that level because he is not walking in obedience to the ways of Yehovah. This is why that they are in need of the milk when they should be a teacher by now. This is not talking to the babes of Messiah. This is talking about those who have been in this long enough they should know better by now. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What does that mean? It means that those who don't make excuses for their actions in their lives between what is good and what is evil and what is obedient and what is disobedient. Their senses are seasoned. You are seasoned, and for lack of better words, you are a veteran in the Word of Yah because you have learned all the ways and you have applied it to your life. Like a soldier does when they go through boot camp and they take that into the field to, to fight for their country and for their families. It's the same way we have come to learn and be taught by the Torah, by our teacher, the Rakh HaKadosh. And we take that and we apply it. We don't go and leave two-thirds of it back on the desk. It all goes so that we will walk perfectly because a perfect soldier is one who takes everything and goes. They are fearless. And no matter what, because of their training, they, they are unstoppable. It is the same thing with us in this as a soldier of Yeshua. We have been trained in the ways of the Word of Yah, and we take it, and the obedience and the commandments and everything that applies to our personal walk will affect everything that we do as that soldier of Yah to go out and reach the lost, to fight against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the heirs of this world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Karen? Um, I was going to say, as a good soldier, we don't get involved in civilian affairs. Uh, nice.
Pharisee. I like that. Amen. That's in the Bible. Okay. Yes. It says don't get involved in civilian affairs. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Jim, hand up. 22. Oh, 548. Yeah, I haven't read Matthew 6, 22 yet. Yeah. When you pray, enter into your closet to be alone with the Father in secret and reward you openly. Amen. Very good, Krista. Amen, amen. All right, so let's see. Let me say this. This all boils down to when we stop thinking of ourselves, what we want. Listen to me, children, sit down quietly. What we want. What is it that we want? It is vanity. It is pride. It is ego, etc. And we are wholly focused on Him, obeying Him, when we, without making excuses, put our stuff aside. When we put our vanity away, our ego away, our pride away, when we stop thinking that, ain't nobody going to talk about me like that, I'll give a piece of my mind. Does it really matter what anybody says about you? No. Seriously. Yeah. Civilian affair. Civilian affair. <clears throat> Unless somebody walks up and tries to put their hands on you, it don't matter what somebody says about you. And about your walk, I don't care what they say about your walk. Even if they think they know you. Unless what they speak is to edify you so that you will change. If they're coming at you like they're judging you, then their words have no meaning. Now, if they're coming to you to hold you accountable because they love you and they, and they know that you know better, then that's a different story. But it doesn't matter what people say or what they do or what they think. The only thing that matters is what Yehovah thinks. The only thing that matters is what He says and what He does. Because when it's all said and done, He's the one that we want to say, welcome in, not you go over there because you're in a bad, you're done. So let's read Jude chapter 1 verse 24. Well, there's only one chapter, but Jude verse 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. So, if, if y'all is able to keep us from stumbling, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless, then we can walk in perfect righteousness before him. We can walk perfect before him. You can say, I am perfect. Are you? We can walk, we cannot walk in absolute 100% sinless life until we are changed from this corruptible flesh to an incorruptible body. But we can walk perfectly before the Father by us surrendering, being broken, giving ourselves to Him, and not making excuses. No matter what it is. I don't care whose feelings you got hurt. You tell me something. And here's something you need to take. This is a rhetorical question. I've got one more thing to read. I had a couple other verses, but 
James 1, 7, I think was the only other one, and that was about the double-minded man. Here, here it is. And here's what you need to really think about and ask yourself. Let's say somebody, family member, somebody comes up to you. They want you to do something. Let's say to do that would break the, the Sabbath. Or let's say to do that would break one of his other commandments. Maybe it'll cause you to lie or to be deceitful or whatever the case may be. And then right after that, you die. We've all heard of people around the world, all of a sudden their heart just stops. They drop dead right there on the spot. Don't know why. Doctors can't figure it out. It just happens. And you were to die right then and there on the spot. And your very last act of your life was disobedience and breaking one of the commandments of Yah because you didn't want to hurt your family member's feelings or our friends' feelings because they wanted something or wanted this or wanted you to be here instead of where Yah wanted you to be. This is what I'm talking about. This is the difference between walking perfectly before Yah and not. How far are you willing to go? You've got to make that decision. And this is the whole of the whole matter right here. Psalm 119. And I implore you, please, listen to every single word that I'm about to read. Because this is who we are supposed to be. This has got to be us. It has to be. It's not. It should be. It has to be. Amen? Amen. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Torah of Yehovah. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies, who seek Him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed. When I look into all your commandments, I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. What did it just say? How can a young man be cleansed, cleanse his way? Huh. By taking heed according to your word. Wow. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Yahweh. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. You notice that there's no my and I in this about what I want? David's not saying that. He's saying what he wants. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your Torah. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul breaks with longing. What does that mean, I am a stranger in the earth? This is not my home. Yes. This is not my home. My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud, the cursed, who stray from your commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul clings to the dust. 
Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answer me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts with heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me your Torah graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O oh, Yahweh, do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Teach me, O oh, Yahweh, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me, your un give me understanding, and I shall keep your Torah. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things Amen. and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Turning away my repro reproach which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Let your mercies come also to me, O Yehovah, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. For I trust in your word, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. For I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep your Torah continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. Remember the word to your servant, upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, for your word has given me life. The proud have met have me in great derision, yet I do not turn aside from your Torah. I remembered your judgments of old, O Yehovah, and have comforted myself. Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked who forsake your Torah. Your statutes have been my songs, in the house of my pilgrimage. I remember your name in the night, O Yah, and I keep your Torah. This has become mine because I kept your precepts. You are my portion, O Yah. I have said that I will keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your Torah. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth of Yehovah is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt, you have dealt well with your servant, O Yah, according to your word. Teach me ju good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forced a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Your heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your Torah. Their heart, sorry, is as fat as grease, but I delight in your Torah. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The Torah of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Your hands have made me fashioned. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when you see me. Those who fear you will be glad when you see me. Those who fear Yah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
because I have hoped in your word. I know, O oh Yah, that your judgments are right, and that in fullness you have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort. According to your word to your servant, let your tender mercies come to me that I may live. For your Torah is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed. For they treated me wrongfully with falsehood, but I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me. Those who know your testimonies, let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes, that I may not be ashamed. My soul thanks for your salvation, for your Yeshua. But I hope in your word. My eyes fail from searching your word, saying, When will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in smoke, yet I do not forget your statutes. So no matter what is going on, no matter what is happening, he declares again and again and again that, Father, whether you forgive me or not, whether you hear me or not, whether you comfort me or not, I will not forget your commandments. I will not forget your Torah. I will walk in your precepts. I will walk in your statutes. I will walk in your ways. I will walk perfectly before you, and I will proclaim your name. Woo! Hallelujah, man! It's a heart Amen. that we have to have. Amen. 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 Like the, I, like the song, even if. Yes. Have mercy me, even if he doesn't heal us. That's right. Amen. Verse eighty-four. How many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your Torah. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. The commandments don't persecute them wrongfully. You're kind of rolled up together. My bad. They almost made an end of me on earth, but I did not forsake your precepts. Re revive me according to your loving kindness, so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. What are the tablets called? The testimonies. That's what it's called from the Hebrew. When Moshe came down with the tablets, he came down with the tablets of testimonies. It doesn't say the tablets of the Ten Commandments. It says the tablets of testimonies. So what he's saying here, that I may keep the testimony of your mouth forever, Yah. Your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. <clears throat> for all your for all are your servants. Unless your Torah had been made my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. Unless your Torah had been made my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. Man, that's poetry. Exactly. For by then you gave, you have given me life. I am yours, save me. For I have sought your precepts. The wicked wait for me to destroy me. But I will consider your testimonies. I have seen the consummation of all perfection. But your commandment is exceedingly broad. Oh, how I love your Torah. It is my meditation all day. You through your commandments make me wiser than my enemies for they are ever with me I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word I have not departed from your judgments for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I, got, I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much, 
Re revive me, O Yah, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Yehovah, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your Torah. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I am not strayed from your precepts. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. I hate the double-minded, but I love your Torah. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my Yah. Uphold me according to your word that I may live. <clears throat> and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up and I will be safe. And I shall observe your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes. For your deceit is falsehood. What's it say? Proverbs 29, verse 28, verse 9. For he who turns his ear away from the Torah, even his prayers are an abomination. You put a, verse 119. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. I have done justice and righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail from seeking your Yeshua and your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your mercy and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. <clears throat> it is time for you to act, O Yah, for they have regarded your Torah as void. Right here, it tells us what was to come through the church, that his Torah would be treated as void. It would be regarded as obsolete. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, than fine gold. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right. I hate every false way. Your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Not to the scholar. Amen. To the simple. Amen. I opened my mouth and panted, as I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> for I long for your commandments. Look upon me and be merciful to me, as your custom is toward those who love your name. Direct my steps by your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. Rivers of water run down from my eyes, because men do not keep your Torah. Righteous are you, O Yah, and upright are your judgments. Your testimony which you have, your testimonies which you have commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure. Therefore your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your Torah is truth. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me, yet your commandments are my delight. The righteousness of your testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Yah. I will keep your statutes. I cry out to you, save me, and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope 
in your word. I expect in your word. Expectation. Tick by. I expect in your word. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness, O Yehovah. Revive me according to your justice. They draw near who follow after wickedness. They are far from your Torah. You are near, O Yah, and all your commandments are truth. Concerning your testimonies, I have known of old that you have founded them forever. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your Torah. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. Salvation is far from the wicked. For they do not seek your statutes. Did you catch that? It says salvation is far from the wicked. For they do not seek his statutes. It doesn't say for they do not seek salvation. It doesn't say for they do not seek mercy and grace. It says because they don't seek his ways. Salvation is far from those who reject his Torah. That's that should make your knees shake. That should make you nervous. Great are your tender mercies, O Yah. Revive me according to your judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet I do not turn from your testimonies. I see the treacherous, and I am disgusted, and am disgusted, because they do not keep your word. Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, O Yah, according to your loving kindness. The entirety of your word is true, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Princes, persecute me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. Excuse me. I hate and abhor lying, but I love your Torah. Wow. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have those who love your Torah, and nothing causes them to stumble. Yehovah, I hope for your salvation, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and your testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Yah. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come, for, come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips shall utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. Let your hand become my help, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Yah, and your Torah is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Learn that chapter and live that chapter. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.